Hey everybody and welcome back. So this is a continuation of one of the build series I'm doing and this one's about the MSL, which I call the MSL-1, but it was my first giant scale electric airplane with a 197 inch wing. <clears throat> so in this video, this is going to be video number four of the series and we're covering the wings. And, <coughs> excuse me, and what was kind of exciting about these wings is I wanted to build them kind of really scale which means I wanted to sew the fabric on, but it is iron on fabric. It was uh, super shrink cover right. But I went ahead and got the wax thread from Aircraft Spruce and the big needle and sewed the fabric on so it actually looked exactly like the sewing and the pinking and all of that to make it work. So if you are new to my channel, I'm obsessed with giant scale electric airplanes. Okay, if you're one of my longtime followers, you know what I'm saying, but um, and I'm, I'm working on a video on why I like to build big. I've had a lot of people reach out and say, please do a video on why giant scale electrics is kind of my passion. So I'm working on that and it will be posted soon. But I just love giant scale aircraft and I love, uh, well, and I fly full scale and I'm building an ultralight. But for RC, radio control, I love building giant airplanes. But I also like my little ARPS and my Flex Cessna 170 and all of those too. I'm not trying to, I've had some people go, why do you hate small planes? I don't hate any model airplane at all. So um, in this video, we're going to talk about these wings. And these wings were, were huge. I mean, they really were. They, they really were. Now, this project was built many years ago, and we'll touch base on that in, in a minute because my daughter is now 20. But that is the right wing she's holding there. This gives you some scale of how big the airplane really is. <clears throat> I ended up with 1,350 flights on it. 1,350. Before I get too far into this video, I do want to give a shout out to one of my awesome supporters, and that is RTL Fasteners. If you go to their website and you use the top secret code DA30 and you buy more than $50 in product, you can get 30% off, okay? Um, I'm trying to sneeze. Sorry about that. My allergies are horrible, everybody. But... If you use code DA30 and you buy more than $50 of product, you'll get 30% off. So I always pop this up as I'm doing the video series here. The plane was going to be a gas powered. It shook the airplane too much at idle. So I put it in the attic for a couple of years, then got a Hacker A100 and test flew it. And uh, actually I test flew it with a Hacker A80, which it flew it, but it wasn't quite enough it wouldn't turn a big enough propeller to look anywhere scale, so I went to the Hacker A100, <clears throat> and it's it's one of the best projects I've ever had. I have 1,350 flights on the plane, or a little bit more than that, I can't remember, uh, something like that. So what we're going to talk about is this wing, and originally it's going to be 192 inches, but it ended up being 197 inches because of the way I did the wing tips and the way they mounted at the fuselage. Uh, the wing was a really super basic design. If you watch any of the other parts of this video series, all the wood on this was going to come from a hardware store or an old crate I had gotten from the industry I work in. A big hoist came in a crate, and I kept the crate because it had this really nice, it wasn't quite Luan, but it wasn't like thin plywood. I'm not sure what it was called. Come from Italy, the wood did. But the ribs came from that crate, and all the other wood in this I cut up or stripped from 2x4s or 1x6s and 1x8s. It was a real simple construction, um, and there you can actually see where I tried to sand off some of the paint on the rib from the crate it came in. Um, the little uh, caps there on the uh, ribs was uh, 30 second plywood, but I already had that, so I didn't have to buy it. I wanted to build this plane absolutely on the cheap. The dowel rods for the bracing. Um, so this is just a really simple wing design. Um, and, and I wanted, to, now keep in mind, I was building this plane kind of as a fast project to throw together a giant scale airplane. It wasn't going to be one of my like super scale planes like I build nowadays. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed sometimes when I look at the way I built this because I just kind of threw this together. If I were to rebuild this airplane nowadays, I would use all balsa wood and reinforce with carbon fiber. And I could probably make the whole plane weigh like 55 pounds or 54 pounds. I think I could keep it under the AMA um, uh, going over 55 rule. And 
Um, so this airplane is just kind of a beast. Um, originally, I was going to have the cables connect to the wings kind of like this, and I didn't like it because you, you got to take this apart and put it together at the field. So I ditched this idea, and uh, uh, it just it just seemed way too complicated to me. And I'll touch base on, on the turnbuckles and everything I did a little bit later in this video. Uh, the wing tips were stripped. Uh, I stripped down to about 330 seconds. Um, the 2x4 material and then I soaked it in Windex and water overnight and then I was able to bend it into the shape and I put a uh, tight bond wood glue in between each of the layers of laminate when I bent it. I wish I had a picture of the jig. I just can't find that picture. I was also going to use all aircraft cable and pulleys to control the flying services like a real airplane would be. So I got me some nylon six um, round stock and basically machined me a nice little pulley here uh, milled it out to make them nice and light. So those were my pulleys and or shivs, whatever you want to call them. And this is what they look like going to be in the wing. Actually, let me go to full screen here. And <clears throat> so that's what they look like. One cable went to the top of the aileron horn and the other went to the bottom. And there was just too much slop in this. I, I mean, I like everything to be really tight. Would it have flown the plane? Yes. Was it heavy? Yes. Uh, was it cool? Absolutely. It was really cool. But it just added too much weight. And here, it's hard to tell, but I was going to have two servos running this big bill crank here, and that bill crank ran out to the pulleys. And um, it was a really neat idea. It is just heavy, and it was sloppy. You got a lot of slop when you move the servos. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I have horrible allergies, folks. I'm po I apologize. Um, my hard points, this is what the hard point looked like. Earlier I showed you where it was going to go down to the wing. I ended up taking some uh, aluminum and making them look like this. And there's the turnbuckles. These turnbuckles ended up being the most expensive part of the entire project, except for the motor uh, and the ESC and the batteries. Um, I think these were like 35 bucks each or something from Air aircraft spruce and there were a ton of them now we're going to get into uh, one one of the things that you'll notice through this is you'll see that i did stain the wing i did that to keep the moisture from attacking it real full-scale airplanes i shouldn't, shouldn't say real but full-scale airplanes do that to for moisture control so i did stain every bit of the wood on this so you could see it through the fabric hopefully and you could so this is me putting on the super shrink cover right and I ironed it on like you would any other fabric and it worked really well. And uh, I mean, keep in mind, this was a beast of a wing. I mean, it was heavy. The whole airplane weighed s about 73 pounds when it was done and it should have weighed probably 55 if I'd done the whole thing with balsa. And uh, so uh, before I... Uh, skin the top of it or put the uh, uh, fabric on. This was the control system I ended up doing for the ailerons, which was two high torque servos um, in tandem and it moved the ailerons fine. The plane flew perfect. And just showing it from the back side. Showing the little hatch I was going to make that was going to be on the top there. So once I got all the fabric on the airplane, I wanted to experiment with how was I going to sew it on? So I was going to go on basically two inch spacings. On the top, you were just going to see the thread coming over the top. And on the bottom is where the knots were going to be. And this is semi kind of like the way a full scale airplane has the thread tied onto it. It's not exact because I did cheat a little bit. But uh, essentially, I bought the big old needle from Aircraft Spruce. And I went through and pre-poked all the holes of where the thread was going to go. And um, this took a ginormous amount of time, folks. I mean, to get this right, uh, it took a lot of time. And I had to have a lot of ways to, because keep in mind, the thread goes, I mean, the needle goes all the way through the wing and out the other side. This is what the bottom looked like with the neat little knots. This is the needle going through the top. Shows another angle of it. And this was the wing when I was pretty much gotten all the sewing done, but I was getting ready to do the pinking. And this is looking through the wing. That's the way the thread looks. 
And I've actually had a couple of people reach out and go, that's not how they do it. They sew it with a big curved needle. Each wing is different. I, I've seen it done both ways. I actually had a really nice gentleman send me a 1928 document on how to uh, sew the fabric on wings. And this is one way to do it, folks. And that's what it looked like when I was testing the pinking at first, but I didn't like the way it really looked and it didn't look scale. So I got my nice little pinking tool so I could put the nice little edges on it. And I pre-pinked everything so that it would look cool. And then I did it to the wing. And this is what it looked like at one of the hard points uh, for the cables. Keep in mind the cables kept these wings on. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say kept the wings on. The wings were actually had screws or bolts that held it to the fuselage, but the this, this stability of the wing was all aircraft cable. There was no spar going through the middle of this uh, fuselage. So without the cables, the wings wouldn't even sit on the airplane. I had to cover the ailerons and everything, and this just ended up looking stellar, folks. I mean, it just, this wing was one of the coolest things I've ever done. I mean, I know I say that sometime in my videos, but really, this, this, this was cool. Give you a little bit of scale of how big the wing was again. There's my daughter when she was little. Another picture. And then the plane. And I'm going to do another video on the stabs and talk about that. I'll talk about the construction and design. And then the covering of the uh, vertical and horizontal stab. That was both wings. Now, <clears throat> one thing that happened on this airplane that um, was surprising is each year I'd go to Ceph and it's a big fly in down America's Georgia and I would fly this plane at the noon demos and if there was any chance of misting or rain I wouldn't pull it out of my little tent hanger I've created but while I was waiting for the noon demo it started to mist and it was actually a really light drizzle and <clears throat> I didn't think about this but the fabric would soak up a liquid because I, ha I hadn't doped or sealed it yet so when it was my time to fly, it was literally drizzling rain. And I took off and the plane just barely stayed in the air. I keep in mind, this plane is already, I mean, it's not underpowered. It's 68 watts per pound, which is, if you know anything about electrics, is still a good number for flying very scale type airplanes. But by the time I had done my third orbit around the field, it was still gaining a boatload of water when it was in the air. And I was at full throttle and final, and it was kind of sinking, and I decided to land. And, you know, the guy doing the announcing said, I think the rains brought him down, and it did. The plane would not fly. It got too heavy. So I brought it, I rolled it back to my hangar, and when I just lifted the tail, I could tell the tail was heavy. So I'm, I'm lucky it didn't become really tail heavy. So I went home uh, the next month, and I went to Aircraft Spruce and bought the I think it's the butyrate dope. It's whatever dope doesn't shrink. There's two types of dope. And I doped it because I didn't want it to shrink because the fabric was already well shrunk and sealed it. And after that, if it ever drizzled, it just kind of, uh, uh, you know, you can see the water just run right off the uh, fabric. So make sure if you're going to do a plane this size of the fabric, you do dope the wings. And... Um, that's me happy as a camper um this is like my second year of flying it but the airplane was just an absolute blast to fly it flew scale the wings were awesome and um i hope you enjoy this video everybody so the next video will be about the stabs and we will dive into that and um go from there so I hope, you I hope you like watching my videos, everybody. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to build my YouTube. I have a lot of people come out and say, wow, I never knew you had 200 videos or you, you even existed in the RC world. And that's fine, but all my videos are instructional or I try to teach and educate or share my, my own experiences. I, you'll hardly ever find me speculate. I like to share with you what I have done and how I've done it and what my results were. Because one of the hardest things when I first got in electrics were all these people were telling me, I call it noise. They're telling me all these different things. One person's like, oh, you can't fly a LiPo down to 3.8 volts, you'll destroy it. Another one's like, I've flown mine to 3.5 and they've recovered. All this stuff was so frustrating to me when I first got into electrics. And internal resistance, which I've done videos about, parallel charging, which I've done videos about, all this stuff I'm trying to share with you all. So if you're new to electric, and especially if you're younger, you know, I absolutely can't stand 
what I call the old farts out there, which are the people that hate the FPV, they hate the drones, they hate electrics. You know, I had somebody reach out to me with a really nasty uh, email one time and said, I can't believe you fly those electrics. How do you think you're saving the world going green? And I never thought that anybody would think we're flying electrics to try to save the planet. I fly electrics because it has a very linear torque. I mean, when you think of the size of props and the pitch we can turn with electric, it's kick ass. Electric is extremely reliable. If you're flying a multi-engine airplane and you got electric, unless you size the ESC wrong or have bad batteries in it, you're not going to lose an engine. Um, you'll never have an, I, a, a, an electric idle bad. <laughs> so that's the reason we love electric is because it's, it's just freaking cool. So, um, so look, if you're a young person watching this, please follow your dreams, follow your passions, get into RC. Uh, reach out to me if you're ever curious about anything or want a video made about anything, and I'll pop one out for you. If you're an old-timer watching this that doesn't like electric, you, I've probably wasted your time. So have a great day, everybody. Be safe. Go flying. Take a kid flying, and I'll see you next time. And uh, I think the next video I'm actually getting ready to come up with, or come up with, to release or post, is why I love to fly giant scale airplanes. I've had a lot of people say, can you dive deeper on it? So rock on everybody, have a great day, be safe. I'll see you next time, bye.